In a previous video, I built a set of super units to create return value functionality with Bolt Visual Scripting. If you missed that video, check the link in the top right or in the video description below. In this short video, I want to build on that previous work and create new super units that allow the passing of an additional parameter. This is not a complicated thing to do, but I wanted to show how to do it all the same. This approach can be further extended to send as many parameters as needed. If that sounds useful, let's get started. When adding functionality to previously created super units, it's important to create copies of those super units. Otherwise, all instances of those super units in the given project will change, which can inadvertently break your project. So the first thing I'm going to do is to duplicate the function call super unit, and I'll rename it to function call one param. This is to indicate that it will be sending one parameter. Once I've done that, inside the super unit, I'm going to add an input value. I'll call it param1, and it will be of type object. Next, I'll change the number of arguments in the trigger custom event unit from two to three. The last step is to connect the input value to the trigger custom event. And that's it. Like I said, not too complicated. So on to the next super unit. Next, I need to duplicate the function event super unit, which I'll rename function event one param. Inside this new super unit, I need to change the number of arguments in the custom event unit from two to three. This matches the trigger custom event in the other super unit. I'll also need to add an output value and I'll call it param one and it will be of type object. Note that when I do this, Bolt gives me a warning that changing the output can break flow macros. This is a good reminder, but in this case isn't a problem as I'm not using the super unit. Once again, the last step is to connect the argument from the custom event to the output value. Since I will only be sending back a single return value, I don't need to duplicate or edit the function return super unit. You could, however, make it so that there are multiple return values quite easily. It's also worth noting that this is not something that is directly built into C Sharp and gives Bolt a little bit of an advantage in some cases. So just like I did in the last video, I want to create a simple example of how to use these three super units. In this case, I'm going to do some simple arithmetic using integers, which is a bit silly and unnecessary to use return values to do this, but it demonstrates the use of these super units. I'll create a new flow macro and drag in the three super units. I'll add a start event and connect it to the function call one param unit. I'll also give the event a name, in this case, just test two in both of the super units. I'll then add a self unit and connect it to the object node on the function call super unit. I'll also add an integer literal unit, giving it a value of two and connect it to the param one node. This integer is the parameter that will be passed into the function. Next, I'll include an add unit and connect the param1 node from the function event super unit to the input. I'll set the b value of the add unit to two and finally connect the output of the add unit to the function return super unit. I'll then connect the flow from the function event super unit to the function return super unit. The last step in the flow macro is to add a debug log unit and connect it to the function call super unit, like so. If all is working, the original two should get passed into the function, then another two should get added to it, and the final value of four is returned to the function call super unit. But before pushing play, I need to add a flow machine and connect the flow macro. With that done, I can push play, and when I do, I can see that the number four is printed to the console as expected. So there you go. This video is pretty short and fairly simple, but with a few tweaks to the super units, it's easy to pass parameters to a function while getting a return value. In my next video, I'll be looking at the issue of object pooling and we'll be making use of super units, custom events, and return values. So make sure to stay tuned for that. And until next time, happy game designing.